I was working on this little pink ladybug at the beach the other day and I sewed on some of these beautiful gold beads and I made her shell and her little face there with some antennae. And what I had planned to do was to put a applique flower on her there. And I don't know, maybe something up there, I'm not sure. But Sunday is a really good day to slow down, breathe, sit back, and let things come to you today. We can learn a lesson from the rocks today. The lesson from the rocks today is sit quietly. The rocks are the sitting people. The trees are the standing people. We can learn lessons from both. But the Sunday lesson today is from the rocks. Rocks are a very important part of nature and also they can teach you things. And today they are teaching me to sit, relax, breathe, and let everything come to me. This is my little box of appliques for my sew-to-go bag. And let's see if we have one to put on Miss Ladybug over there. Oh, we have a tiny purple one. That is very pretty. The purple goes to the background, pink and purple. Plus, this has got some, some lovely beads on it. We have a rocket ship. <laughs> Let's see. Well, this one's actually paper. That might have to get glued down. A really big butterfly. Now everything that I need is in my sew to go bag for slow stitching in my just because journal, which is a fabric journal. The side pocket has some thread. And a pair of scissors. I'm just going to use this variegated thread. But it is six strands, so I am going to divide it in half. And I have a container with needles and needle threaders. I'll lose my string here. So I'm looking for my favorite needle. I think it's that one.
You might remember when I started a harvest of a book that takes its time. Perfect for slow Sunday, isn't it? And I started harvesting some of the papers that are in there because it is a flow book, which means it contains a lot of papers and journaling cards and different things that you can pull out of and put into your journal. So a flow book or a flow magazine is something that contains materials, whether it be paper or fabrics or trim, it doesn't matter. That is like a resource book for you to flip through and pull things out and put them into your journal. So I started a harvest on this and I pulled out a few images. I have here and I started writing down some of the ideas I got while I was harvesting. I took the title page which is a copy of the cover and I made a little sort of heart-shaped journal. I got this idea from Janet Nash so this is funny she got the idea to do a mushroom shaped journal from me. I believe it was the mushroom and then she made a heart shaped. So I'm going to use her idea of a heart shape to make a journal, a book that takes its time. So this is sort of like a slow Sunday. <laughs> this is like a slow Sunday journal where you just take your time and put down things in here that maybe that you have to slow down to enjoy. <laughs> like a cup of tea or a little bit of nature. This orange page I also harvested from the book. And this is another book. I got this one at the library book sale. And this one also has some beautiful images. Now look at these very comfy chairs. <laughs> I think they need to go into my unhurried journal. Let's take a closer look at this book, Designer Scrapbooks with Susan Rios. I love this cover. And I probably will take this cover off <laughs> and use that cover in my journal. And look, and there's the cup of tea. Lovely, isn't that? Oh, I love that. So these are unique scrapbooking designs and ideas from a top contemporary painter. Oh, she's a painter. She probably painted this right here. All right, let's look for her name. Rios, it is R-I-O-S. And here's that picture again. Oh, and a lovely one on the back, too. I like the cup of tea. So this book contains her art, which I can cut out and use in my journal. I also noticed that there were a few, like, patterns that she gave you. Oh, this is fun. Like a palette. Scrapbooking embellishments. So she's giving you, actually, some of the embellishments. Ooh, yes, look at that. But are they, like one-sided so maybe you have to cut them out and copy them oh and santa as you can see i didn't spend a lot of time looking through this yet this when you first walk into the library there's a shelf on the left hand side and, you know, once or twice a year they have big book sales, but they usually keep a few books just for sale. And there's like a little wooden box that you put your money in. And sometimes I'll stop. They have like free magazines that were donated. You can take those. And sometimes I'll stop and look at, you know, what they have on the bookshelf. And I saw this the other day and I thought this would be really fun. It's almost like a flow journal in that I'll be taking out some of these things and putting them in my journal. Oh, look at the teacup. Teacup embellishment. Founder's Day tea invitation patterns. Oh, it's a fan. So you copy this and then you put the little faces in the fan and then you could put that on the page. Oh, that's a fun idea. 
Oh, I love the lavender. Join me for tea. Beautiful. There's some instructions here on a lacing project. Oh, for all these X's. That might be fun for slow stitch. Ah, oh, look at these paintings. Beautiful. Oh, so here's a pattern for a hat and for some stars. I thought I saw one for like a Victorian shoe. And here's some papers you can harvest. Oh, this is gorgeous. Oh, and here's a castle. Oh, here's the Victorian boot. So you can make uh, an embellishment with that. That's interesting. So some of this stuff I might have to, to pull out and copy. I love that fan idea. Oh, look at this cozy room. Oh, wow. Isn't that inviting? Special little nook there. Well, you know, this is going to come out. This one might come out right away. I did have my knife out here a minute ago. There it is. There we go. Wow, that is beautiful. Susan Rios, you are a marvelous artist. Look at the paper she gives you, too. Making your own papers. Oh, man, look at this. That is so lovely. Oh, here she is. Oh, and here's another one. Oh, all <laughs> a lot of this will be going into the unhurried <laughs> Sunday journal, I think. Yes. Oh, and the oranges go really pretty with that, too, and the pinks and the oranges. I, I'll be cutting this down and putting that there. But what I was going to put on this page was a reminder to slow down. And this is also something I saw uh, Janet Nash do. And she had sketched this little tiny sloth, and I thought, well, wouldn't it be fun... <laughs> To put a little sloth here, maybe some leaves and tree branches, and um, like a time to slow down or, or some, some kind of words on there. I thought it would be really fun. Now I want to make a sloth hanging upside down off a branch, but I find it easier to draw right side up, so I'm going to draw it right side up and then flip it over <laughs> so it's upside down. So let's just draw a very simple sloth. And I'm going to start for my heart-shaped journal. Oh, I made, I forgot to tell you, I made this journal out of a brochure. I have another one here. Let's see. Reaching over. You know, you go into your home improvement store and they have these brochures for windows and doors and all kinds of blinds and all kinds of things. But this is nice. The cover's a little bit heavier and the pages are a nice thick quality and they're not too big, which I like. Oh, this is, oh, this is beautiful too. That can go in the journal. <laughs> And I love windows. So you can see I didn't look through this yet either. I gather things up and when I sit down, you know, I take my time and look through them. Anyway, these are Andersons and I would love to replace our sliding door over there in the kitchen by French doors. I don't like that sliding door. Uh, push it, push it, push it this way. I would like a nice, wonderful French door that just opened up like that. 
So I took the Anderson pamphlet um, to look at the French doors, and actually that's what this was. This was about the doors to going out to the patio. And I want something, I cut this one out. <laughs> this is the one I like. I want something like this, where instead of sliding, you, you open them up. So I actually cut this one out because I thought maybe I would put it on, you know, like a picture of the outdoor, something like that, on one of the pages. And I just cut this funky heart shape. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I, you know, you've got your straight edge here so you can sew in the pages and make it work like a book. So I just kind of did a quick sort of heart shape like that. And then, like I said, this is the title page from the book. And before I glued it down, I went over to my machine and I stitched on a little bit of this peachy color lace. Just because I was in the mood to do so. And I thought the peach kind of went well with the oranges and pinks on the cover here too. All right, I'm sorry. I digress back to our little sloth. So to go in my heart-shaped journal, I'm going to start with a sloth with a heart shape. So if you're sketching along with me, just kind of make like a roundy heart shape. I want it a little bit at an angle. I use the eraser a lot when I sketch. Okay. So we have a heart shape a little bit at an angle because the head's going to be resting on a branch like that. And then in the middle of the heart, make a U like that. That's going to be the nose. And then we're going to have two sleepy eyes. So we need two more U's. And then a little little mouth. Now sometimes you see the sloths drawn with you know, kind of like a raccoon with these darker bands like that. And then I'm going to finish off the head. So just come up like that. And sometimes you see them drawn with little bangs or with little little funny tufts of hair sticking up. So I'm going to sketch this out and then I will go over it with a micron pen which is um, will not wash away when I color it in and then I will erase the lines and then I will color it in. And so this is just a very simple basic then you've got the back comes up and come around and you've got the leg hanging down. You've got an arm, maybe the head's resting a little bit on an arm like that. And sloths have big toes. If you want to draw the toes, you don't have to. You could just kind of make it roundy or maybe curved in a little bit like that. And that'll sort of represent the toes. Now there's one coming around the other side, like that. This might be too much of an angle, but we do want to get sort of like a, a belly shape going in there. And then the back leg. And it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just, you know, a fun drawing, that's all. Get another little bit of log going in there. Okay, so this is the branch of the tree. And that's it, basically. So see, when I turned it upside down, 
I've got my sloth hanging on the tree. <laughs> okay, where is my micron pen? I've got to reach up here and hope this is a good one. Looks good. Some of them are so worn out. I'm so used to doing everything at an angle. So again, the heart shape first. So start with the heart. A big U in the middle. For the nose. And then two U's for the sleepy eyes and a little sort of oval mouth. <laughs> That's not a very good U over there. I think I hit the... Uh... Oh, we can make this a lady sloth. And give her a couple eyelashes. Okay, then she's got the dark patches so come around on both sides. And then up to the top like that. And if I don't turn, I don't get a good, good line with the pen. So what if we give her, instead of that tuft of hair, A few flowers. Like that. Okay, now the back. Come around. You might want a little bit of a darker line because this is where I'm going to cut. Two of the legs. I'm going to make a sketchy rough bark here for this, for the branch. And the other leg coming down. Continue the branch. And one more back leg. And this is, oh, there should be a line here because she's hanging down. And the tree, this is the bottom because we're drawing it upside down. So this is the bottom of the branch. Give that one second to dry, and I use extra soft, dust-free Factist eraser. They're very soft, and they don't, you know, they don't mess up the sizing on the paper. So when you paint, 
you get a much smoother look. I think I bought a whole box of these on Amazon. It was cheaper than buying like one at the store. I think I have a lifetime supply. Okay, I'm going to get some paint. I think I'm going to do watercolors. This is a small Windsor and Newton travel palette that I used for many, many, many years. <laughs> nature journaling out in the field and it has been filled and refilled so many times I couldn't even tell you what colors these were <laughs> and I still love it you know I have a great big studio palette that I use inside but this is my outside palette but I'm using this right now I'm just giving this some time to Moisten up. I haven't used this one in a while. This is my new brush. I love this brush. And this is King Art Premium 8 Original Gold. This is round. It holds a lot of water. Good for watercolors. Okay, what color is a sloth? <laughs> sort of brownish. One thing I do know about sloths is that they have special kind of fur with micro cracks in it, and this allows fungi, algae, and insects <laughs> to have a complete ecosystem <laughs> on the back of the sloth. So if you're out in the jungle, I learned this when I was in Costa Rica, so if you're out in the jungle and you're wondering what the green stuff on a sloth sloth is. Yeah, that is, that is algae and fungi and there's like moths that live on the, the sloth. <laughs> so many things. It's like an entire ecosystem living on the sloth in their green fur. So I'm going to give her A little touch of green. Now I'm going to go right to the darker bands while that green settles in for a moment. I'm going to go with a lighter tan for the belly. And that same color for the face. I'm going to use my napkin here to just lift a little bit from the cheeks because I'm thinking about putting some pink on there. I might put a more green. This is like a sparkly blue on here, I'm using the colors on the lid. Like a yellow and a sparkly blue. And a little bit of green down here. This is called a dirty palette. Some people just love a dirty palette. And some people just have to have a perfectly clean one. If you put the two colors on when they're wet, then they kind of blend together a little bit. Come on. Put your body out of the door. Move your tail. So Miss Titi just came into the room looking for some attention. Sloths are very, very camouflaged, man. It was so hard to spot one when we were in the primary rainforest. I think I, I, I think I only saw one the whole time. Hi, 
and I keep thinking I'm not even sure what I was looking at, but everybody assured me it was a sloth because it was it was just so camouflaged. You coming up? Come on. You know I don't like you up here when I'm painting. They assured me it was a sloth. You know, you look up into the trees and there's something brown with green on it. <laughs> And you think, oh, it's just some moss on the tree, right? Some algae, whatever. And no, that's a sloth. <laughs> so I like the little bits of variation in there. All right, let's go back here for some of the sparkly yellow, green, blue, blue mix here. We're going to get some of this to run into the brown. Like that. And I'm going to do the legs. And since she's all brown, I might do the tree gray. And this pink I have is, is like opaque. It's like an opaque kind of pink. I'm going to mix a little of this darker color in. Do some cheeks. Like that. Isn't she gorgeous? Got to do her flowers and let's see. Maybe we'll make some pink daisies. And I guess I will go with whatever color this is. For the tree. Looks good to me. So because this is upside down, the darker part is down here. So you paint in the darker part. And you just pull the color up to the lighter part, which I need to turn again. All right, we're going to let her dry and cut her out. I cut her out and I put her on the page with her sparkly green algae. I took some time to write the quote from a Chinese philosopher, nature does not hurry, yet everything is accomplished. And then, so you don't forget that moths live in the fur of a sloth, I put three little moths down here flying around. Well, I just want to thank you for coming along today on this hashtag slow stitch Sunday, hashtag slow down Sunday. Happy junk journaling. Bye bye.